Tick, the most dangerous bug in the world. The Earth is home to many strange and deadly beasts. From venomous snakes to giant wild cats, we have it all. However, in today's video, we'll be talking about one of nature's most threatening creatures, the tick. These little guys are often overlooked despite being some of the most dangerous bugs in the world. That's why we'll cover not only what the tick is and what makes it so dangerous, but also give you some practical tips on keeping yourself tick-free. So without further ado, let's get into it. Habitats and Distribution First off, let's talk about where these ticks are found, shall we? Well, the global distribution of ticks is massive, with some regions experiencing higher prevalence than others. What's interesting is that ticks can be found on every continent except Antarctica. In North America, ticks are widespread, with particularly high prevalence in regions like the northeastern United States, the upper Midwest, and parts of the Pacific Northwest. In Europe, tick populations are prevalent in countries such as Germany, Poland, and Russia. Parts of Asia, including Japan and China, also have significant tick populations. In these regions, they are commonly found in environments where they can access hosts for blood meals. Woodlands, with their dense vegetation and abundance of wildlife, are prime tick habitats. Here, ticks thrive in the leaf litter, tall grasses, and low shrubs, waiting for a passing host. Ticks are particularly fond of transitional zones, as these areas often host a variety of animal species that can serve as hosts. In addition to these natural habitats, ticks have also adapted to thrive in urban and suburban environments. They can be found in parks, gardens, and even backyards, especially if there are tall grasses, shrubs, or areas frequented by wildlife, like dog parks. Anatomy of a Tick You might be thinking that ticks are extremely pesky insects that are found everywhere. Well, you'd only be half correct. This is because ticks aren't actually insects, they're arachnids. This means that they are closely related to spiders and scorpions. This connection is rooted in their shared evolutionary ancestry, which dates back millions of years. Unlike insects, which universally sport six legs, arachnids like ticks display an impressive eight-legged configuration. This anatomical arrangement provides exceptional stability and agility in a variety of environments. With two more legs than insects, arachnids like the tick have a greater number of points of contact with the ground, allowing for more precise movement and enabling them to navigate complex terrains. The size of a tick varies from species to species. For example, the common black-legged tick is about the same size as a sesame seed, and the size of the brown dog tick can be slightly larger than that. Also, ticks can become significantly larger after a blood meal, especially female ticks. When fully expanded, a female tick can swell to several times its original size. Also, did you know that there are actually two types of ticks? Hard ticks and soft ticks? Hard ticks, scientifically classified as ixodidi, are characterized by their robust exoskeleton, lending them their descriptive name. This exoskeleton is notably resilient, providing protection against crushing or puncturing. When full of blood, their bodies assume a flattened, shield-like shape. In contrast, soft ticks, classified as argosidae, possess a more pliable, leathery exoskeleton, which lacks the resistance to pressure found in their hard tick counterparts. This flexible exoskeleton that looks wrinkled contributes to their designation as soft ticks. Feeding Process Next up, let's talk about how ticks feed using their unique anatomy. Once a suitable host is detected, the tick embarks on its mission to make contact. Upon reaching the host, the tick relies on specialized sensory structures on its legs and body to pinpoint an ideal feeding site. Notably, hard ticks possess a unique structure on their front legs called the Haller's organ, capable of detecting chemical signals emitted by the host's skin. Ticks possess a specialized feeding structure known as the capitulum, housing the mouthparts. 
These mouthparts include the chelicera, often referred to as fangs, equipped with sharp saw-like structures. It is with these tools that the tick delicately creates a small incision in the host's skin. The hypostum features barbs or denticles that curve backwards, angering the tick to the host. These barbs serve as an effective deterrent against attempts by the host to dislodge the tick through scratching or other means. Ticks then secrete saliva into the feeding site, which plays a complex role in the feeding process. Additionally, the saliva contains anticoagulants, crucial in preventing the host's blood from clotting, ensuring an uninterrupted flow. With the feeding apparatus securely in place and the necessary biochemical adaptations in play, the tick begins to feed on the host's blood. Employing powerful muscles, the tick orchestrates a pumping action that propels blood into its digestive system. Depending on the species and life stage of the tick, this feeding can extend over several hours to even days. Diseases it goes without saying that the most dangerous bug in the world must have some sort of weapon they can use. Well, in the case of the tick, those weapons are the diseases it carries. Different species of ticks carry different diseases and can effectively deliver them inside an animal's body while feeding. The deer tick is notorious for its role as a vector for several diseases, most notably Lyme disease. Caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi, Lyme disease can lead to symptoms ranging from fever and fatigue to joint pain. If left untreated, it can result in severe complications affecting the heart and nervous system. The American dog tick is another species known to transmit diseases like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. This disease can lead to symptoms including fever, headache, rash, and in severe cases, organ failure. American dog ticks can also transmit tularemia. Native to the southeastern United States, the Lone Star Tick is known to transmit diseases like ehrlichiosis, which is caused by various species of bacteria. Symptoms may include fever, headache, fatigue, and muscle aches. The Lone Star Tick has also been associated with the transmission of STARI, which is Southern Tick-Associated Rash Illness. The castor bean tick is another vector for Lyme disease and tick-borne encephalitis TBE. TBE is a viral infection that affects the central nervous system, leading to symptoms ranging from mild fever and headache to severe neurological complications. All of this stands as proof of the lethality that a tick possesses. Protection Against Ticks to protect yourself from all of these dangerous diseases, there are a few steps you could take. A crucial step is wearing protective clothing, especially in tick-prone areas like woodlands or tall grasses. Choose to wear long sleeves and long pants and tuck your pants into your socks or boots to minimize skin exposure to potential tick habitats. This is why wildlife explorers are always covered head to toe. Another vital measure is the use of tick repellent. Applying a repellent containing DEET on exposed skin and permethrin on clothing can be highly effective in deterring ticks. Staying on cleared trails when hiking or walking through wooded or grassy areas is also advisable. This reduces direct contact with tall grasses and vegetation where ticks are more likely to be found. Maintaining a well-kept yard is another fundamental step in reducing tick habitats. Regularly mow your lawn and clear away tall grasses, weeds, and brush where ticks may reside. Consider using tick control products in your yard as well. Performing thorough tick checks on yourself, your children, and your pets after spending time outdoors is vital. Pay close attention to hidden areas like behind the ears, underarms, groin, and the back of the knees. Additionally, taking a shower within two hours of coming indoors can help wash off unattached ticks and offer an opportunity to conduct a thorough tick check. In the event that you find a tick attached, quick and accurate removal is key to minimizing the risk of disease transmission. Using fine-tipped tweezers, grasp the tick as close to the skin surface as possible. Pull upward with steady, even pressure, avoiding any twisting or jerking motions as this could cause the mouthparts to break off and remain in the skin. 
Also, avoid squeezing the tick's body, as this can force infectious material into the wound. After removing the tick, clean the bite area and your hands thoroughly with rubbing alcohol, an iodine scrub, or soap and water. Finally, dispose of the tick by either flushing it down the toilet or sealing it in a bag before disposing of it in the trash. Overall, it becomes abundantly clear that the tick is an extremely dangerous bug that should not be messed with. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on videos like this. See you next time!